Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I'm actually going to be giving you a guided tour and more importantly a comparison to show you around the two new B550 Strix boards. Now I have known the difference between uh, Strix E and F in the past to be down to some very minor things like Wi-Fi. Whereas with these boards, I actually think the fact that they're so similarly named is actually quite confusing because they are in fact very different motherboards. So we're going to be having a good look round, try and work out which one might be better for your build. Okay then, so the E and the F, or as I've always kind of used it in my head, especially because of the way they sit in the product ranges as well. I've always called them, I've thought that the F stood for formula and the E stood for extreme. Now I'm not gonna do a full box open and show you what's in the box because it is manual, driver CD, SATA cables, a little sticker pack. You do get some extra addressable and normal four pin RGB extension cables in the uh, extreme. They do both come with antennas for the Wi-Fi 6 because they do both support the uh, Intel uh, AX1200, uh, like I said, Wi-Fi 6. Also, they do also both support the new Asus AI mic, which is a noise cancelling uh, bit of software. And Asus are uh, shouting pretty loudly at the moment and saying that it's kind of the same, if not better, than the RTX version and that it can drown out a hairdryer in the background without any quality loss might be worth a dedicated test at some point. But when we come to the electrics themselves, like I said, it's, they are actually very different. Um, they are strangely similar as well, uh, and not just in the naming, but when you dig deep, you can start to see some uh, differences, like very minor differences in that you have uh, the two CPU headers for cooling uh, fans up on the top of the F. But when you move across to the uh, extreme, you can see that there's instantly an extra header up. That is for an AIO pump as well. So you can see that the uh, your extra pounds straight away does kind of send you down the realms of having a higher spec board. Now, despite them looking very similar, they do, they do have similar VRMs, but the Extreme has an extra two, and they're both running DOS, Dr. Moss MOSFETs on these, which basically means you have the high and the low and the driver in a single unit. Now, the F is 12 plus two, so you have 12 for the CPU and then two for the SOC, so the silicon on chip, like the memory side of things, that sort of thing. But with the Extreme, it's 14 plus two, so there again, you see where the extra value is coming in. Also with the Extreme, you get things like the PCI poster down at the bottom and an external USB 3.1 Gen 1 uh, for newer cases. Whereas with the uh, F, you just get the, the, on the external USB uh, 3 down the side here. Um, and they do both have that because that's one of the weird things. They normally have the same thing and then the Extreme's got that little extra bit more, which is why I said to you about the uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2. Also, when it comes to uh, RGB, you can see four pin headers on the uh, F, but you actually get some extra addressable headers on the E. Now, other things to kind of keep in mind are the way and the main thing I will say are the way that the PCI Express lanes are utilized because with B550 you can pretty much pick and choose how you want to do things. This also does impact things like uh, the USB 3.2 Gen 2 and Gen 1 and the USBs on these are very different as well but with the um, F you can see you have PCI Express 16 at the top. Now this is PCI Express Gen 4. Now the next PCI Express Gen, uh, the next PCI Express 16 is here, but it's actually ju it's just PCI Express 3, and it's only wired as a four times lane as well, and that actually goes into the chipset. So this is PCI Express 3. Also, the problem is, is you can either use this 16 line times lane or 
the one times lanes. You cannot use both. It's a kind of either or thing. The uh, M.2 that is at the top of the F is PCR Express 4 and that is wired into the CPU. And we move over to the F. You can see here that we have three 16 times uh, sized slots for PCR Express in total. Now the bottom one is PCR Express 3 wired as a 4 that goes into the chipset and you can use that or the uh, one times lanes. But the difference here, which is also given away by the fact that the um, first and the second slots have metal shielding on, is that it does support Crossfire and SLI. The F doesn't because it's only got a one times la the one lane, uh, the one lane, the one slot. It is 16 times lane. It is PCI Express 4, but there's just one of them, and that's your graphics card slot. On the extreme, it has two of them. Both PCR Express 4, but the thing is, if you put one graphics card in, it's 16 lanes at PCR Express 4. If you pop a second graphics card in, then they both run at 8 because it shares those 16 lanes between them if you run the, a pair. Now, the uh, very much is the same as this one. PCR Express 4 M.2 at the top, which is wired straight into the CPU because the b 550s chipsets don't have PCR Express 4 on them at all. And then the lower chipset on both boards is PCR Express 3. So if you were to pop a, a Gen 4 hard drive in the bottom, it's probably going to run at about 3,500 megahertz. Whereas with the top one, you'll be able to get full speed for your drive. So that's something to uh, keep an eye on there. So fairly big differences with the PCR Express straight away. So uh, as I've already stated, you can see that with the Extreme, you are actually, for a change, which I kind of like, which is why I've put both the boards in the video, you do kind of see where the extra money is due to be spent. And it's not just a very minor change like they have been in the past. But the other things that are different are around the back. And that is because uh, the uh, USBs are very different and they are laid out very different as well. With the F, you get two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and then six USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and then six USB 2 ports. Or at least that's what's written on the box because when you look around the back, there aren't that many USB ports on there at all. So I'm assuming that they might mean the fact that you've got the internal ones, but the both of the boards have two internal USB 2 ports at the bottom. But when we do go on to the E, the box actually makes a little bit more sense because it says that it has a one times USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel connector. Sorry, I did say that incorrectly before. Has three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and then confusingly enough, it says it has nine USB 2 ports. So where the hell are they hiding all those ports? Now to answer this, confusingly enough, we have to bring up the block diagram because what happens on the F, which has the lesser amount, it says it has six USB 2s. That's actually two on the back panel, which I've shown you. There are two internal headers, which count as two USB 2s each. So that's dual on each. So there's the um, six. So that explains for that. And when you go over to the extreme, there are four on the back panel, two internally, which means four. So there's eight. And then amazingly, if you have a look, the uh, extra one is the USB type C connector on the uh, back for the audio. Now that is actually USB 2 as well. So that's how you explain the six and the nine USB 2s on uh, the back. But that is your USB breakdown for those two boards as well. So with a decent wrap around the boards, you can see the fair difference between the two. You will also see that there are um, video outputs on the back of these boards for if you do end up wanting to use APUs as well. You do need to go very careful with APUs though because as shown on the box they uh, are not suitable for the 3400G and the 3200G and that is because even though they're 3000 series APUs 
they actually use 2000 series CPU cores which aren't supported by B550. So if you did want to use those onboard video ports, you would need the later, incredibly confusing, stupid AMD naming scheme, but the later 4000 series APUs. Because the 4000 series APUs will have 3000 series CPU cores in them. So incredibly complicated. I wish they could have sorted it out a little bit different, but there are rumors that we might be getting APUs uh, before we get the actual 4000 series process and they might be relatively soon, but at the time of going to press, I haven't got a clue. Also, because of NDA, I'm not allowed to talk to you uh, about prices between the two, but you can kind of uh, skirt around and have a look online and also go and have a look on the uh, OC3D website for the news. Randomly, I'm not allowed to say it out loud in a video, but I could write it down on the website if I had a source. Okay, right. So, confusing NDAs are confusing. Uh, very similar looking boards, but as you've seen today, actually very different as well. Uh, it would almost be easier if they had called them the Strix Formula and the Strix Extreme, because then they would have been a lot more visually, you know, like a difference between the two. But... Other than that, I hope you like this B550 preview. I will be back on the 16th because that is the day for the NDA. Hopefully, with a full batch of tests and some reviews for you as well. Don't know how many of them I'm going to video yet, but if you'd like to see one, or maybe both, or even both of them in the same video reviewed for NDA, get your comments down underneath. And if you'd like to chat about them, you can go to the OC3D forums to chat all the lads over there about it as well. But for now, at least, this has been the tiniest one with another B550 preview for you. Out.